Okay, hey guys. Um, this is another talk. Um, this is about um, using LibreOffice um, not as a standalone application, but in various ways um, connected to other systems or extended with plugins or embedded somewhere or running on a server. So it's the using LibreOffice as a part of a larger system or ex extending LibreOffice with something to customize it to your, to your needs. Um, this is uh, Samuel, you know him. He's been having a talk just yet. Um, I'm Thorsten. Uh, we both work for CIB. Um, CIB does um, lots of things, among them um, uh, LibreOffice, but also um, other stuff like PDF processing and um, document generation and cloud stuff like um, DMS storage and um, 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 processing, OCR, lots of things that um, people need to do with documents and LibreOffice is an obvious part um, of that offering because, of course, LibreOffice deals with documents as well. Um, so, and coming from, from that angle, um, the, um, th there's various, um, th there are various areas that we have, CIB as a company works on integrating LibreOffice, so we're, we're coming from a, um, from, from a perspective here that, that we actually use that, um, both inside the company and at customers. <coughs> so hopefully um, uh, we can give you a little bit of insight um, into this whole um, LibreOffice is a piece of the puzzle or LibreOffice is a Swiss army knife toolbox thing um, to use for anything that you need to do with uh, documents or document processing. So, a wonderful Windows, it just, just works, you know. <laughs> It adapts to the screen. It looks slightly skewed, but just slightly, uh, I don't know. Okay, um, so just a little bit of a pitch. Um, wh why would that matter? I mean, if you, I mean, I don't know. How many of you are um, um, using LibreOffice um, in your company um, or as a user? Or are you all, is there anyone here, t um, like Joss, right? I mean, anyone here who's really integrating LibreOffice into uh, into systems? Christoph, yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, I mean, the, so probably it's a bit um, 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 uh, old for Athens to, to most of you, but for the sake of the audience uh, that will watch the video, um, it's really cool to have um, something like LibreOffice uh, with a So it's just me. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, magic hands. Okay. Um, right. So it's it's just wonderful to have something like LibreOffice, and it would be stupid not to use that. And um, so um, uh, I mean, if you look at this, this is a f um, future of open source survey. Um, LibreOffice turns out to be um, even before the Linux kernel. And I mean, the Linux kernel is the the poster child of reusing that everywhere and running everywhere. So LibreOffice should really be that as well. Um, take it and run it everywhere and use it for anything that you need to do um, when it comes to document processing, document rendering, document conversion. Um, again, it feels a little bit, for you it might feel a little bit like um, um, old. Hello. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Right, so it's it's really a trend, and I hope to um, to ride this trend uh, for 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 much longer. Um, and um, it's um, really encouraging to see um, what what people are doing um, with LibreOffice all over the place. Um, and I think it's um, it's not the end of it, but just the beginning um, that we are seeing here. And again, trend. Yeah. 
So that's better. Right, so come on. So here we go. Um, <laughs> where was I? Right, so um, yeah, that's an industry trend, and um, yeah, again, you know that, but maybe for the sake of the audience out there. <clears throat> Um, what we, um, what I see LibreOffice and what we see LibreOffice is really a, a Swiss Army knife, not only when it comes to the number of document formats that are uh, supported, but also in the way that you can integrate it, um, extend it. So um, it's really the, the, the number of extension points and, and the, the way to interact with it, the number of language bindings that are existing for LibreOffice is just staggeringly large. Um, and that's almost no, no reason not to use that. So for every language, for every platform that's relevant, for every document format, you'll probably find uh, some support in LibreOffice. <clears throat> um, so that gets me to the, um, the, uh, well, the, the first uh, port of call, of course, when you, when you want to integrate something is you need to somehow hack code to do something with LibreOffice. So this is the, the programmability aspect um, of the uh, integration story. And um, so one um, cornerstone of that, and um, down out there in the, in the industry, Java is really, 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 really popular. Um, and it's especially in an, in an enterprise context, it's still the platform and the language of choice. So um, there's a wonderful plugin for Eclipse that was developed by um, a colleague of mine during SUSE time, Cedric Bostona. Lots of contributions from other people. Um, and that really streamlines the, um, the, the, the process of developing extensions and um, Uno applications for LibreOffice. And I got recently, um, fixed and much improved by, by Samuel. Um, there's a blog link here. Um, there's, it's hosted. Um, the, so Eclipse has this sort of extension repository, um, like LibreOffice as well. Um, um, but you can point it to extra repos. And so we uh, set up one um, on the, at the LibreOffice site uh, to host it there. So you can just add that to Eclipse, and then it will update whenever there's a new version. <coughs> to take that over? Okay. <laughs> Maybe it works better for you. Okay. Yeah, we already saw a little bit of the Eclipse plugin in my last talk, but the focus there was on extension development. Now I want to uh, get a little bit more into all the features of the Eclipse plugin. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's wizard-based extension development. We didn't see the wizard uh, wizards yet. We will have a look at them. Um, so you don't need to create the IDL files by hand, uh, all the services and interfaces, uh, and lots of stuff where it helps. Um, yeah, deploy and press of a button, and debug, that's what we already saw. Um, yeah, so we go over to the demo. I just switch this. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay, I think I'll double the screen. So um, while we wait for Windows to get its act together, um, I don't know. <laughs> so um, 
Again, the, the question perhaps to, to all of you, so who, who ever wrote an extension for LibreOffice? This one? That's quite a number of people. That's like 10, 15 people. Which, which language should you use? Java. 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 Basic. Basic. Python. 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 <laughs> JavaScript, wow, nice. So, so if you would do that again, would you pick the same language or something else? How's, how's the Python experience these days? Okay-ish. Yeah, I, I will get to that. <laughs> Who's still happy with basic? Sorry? Still happy with basic? Yeah. yeah, you should probably, if it's if it's more than I don't know, two thousand lines, you should probably stop uh, for basic or no. So what's your personal limit? We get distracted. Uh, the question was, what are my limitations with basic? It's not so much the line count, but it's more if I uh, try to do m much uh, integration stuff or not. And it's all within the uh, LibreOffice components that uh, the work happens. Okay, so Samuel seems to be ready. Let's have the demo. Okay. So, um, first of all, if you want to start, um, we go to File New and want some other type. And then there are the types of project that you can generate. An extension project, that's what we already have seen. Uno client application, that is if you want to connect um, from an application to an existing LibreOffice instance. So it's not in LibreOffice, but uh, to connect from it externally. And URE based, this is something, something I don't really understand. It's like a, you can use Uno to build your own application, is that right? Uh, I think, um, Stefan, you might uh, know better. Um, where is he? Uh, that's probably the C++ uh, runtime stuff, is it? So what is this URE-based application? What is the purpose of an uh, uh Yes, you can have applications, uh, standalone applications, um, that use the URE, so you can, for example, have an application that you, it doesn't need to be an extension to LibreOffice. It can also be a standalone application that then connects, or it does not even connect to LibreOffice. So, so you can build your own application on the uh, Uno on the Uno infrastructure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's probably that one. Probably not. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Most um, used projects would be the extensions and the Uno clients. Um, yeah, during the wizards, you can create Uno interfaces and services, but you can also create them afterwards. So we'll go through the wizard first. Project name, this is our LibreOffice conference extension. Um, okay, the work space extension, this is some package name we can choose. Uh, programming language. There is only Java supported at the moment. There were some efforts to also make a C++ plugin, but that has been dropped because of lack of maintenance. And yeah, so if you haven't configured your LibreOffice path and SDK path yet, you could do it here. We have already done it. And you could uh, specify other source uh, directory layouts, separate source uh, folder or IDL folder. Okay, next step, this is not the Java version you use in your extension, but it's the Java version 
um, you tell the, um, the skeleton creator from LibreOffice for which Java it should be created. There was a Java 1.4 option that has been dropped in LibreOffice, so there is only Java 1.5 compatibility. Okay, then you, yeah? And, and I mean, the, the sticking point really is that if you leave everything at the defaults, you can you click three times and you have something that, that should work. Right. Okay, then you can include base classes for tests. We leave that on and have a look at it, how that looks afterwards. Um, yeah, then, okay, there is a default service name with an interface. Um, you should be able to show the types, but that doesn't work currently, and I don't know why. So if someone has some interest in looking up that bug, help is always welcome. The LO Eclipse plugin is on GitHub under the LibreOffice organization, I think. I think I even have it in my browser open. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we sort of adopted it, so it was kind of, I think it was on SourceForge somehow lingering Maybe. somewhere, and so we just adopted it. Okay, yeah, so you can submit issues and pull requests, whatever you want. Okay, we'll go next. And then, um, yeah, what's interesting, you can um, add member functions to your, um, to the services. So this is my method, return type, this even works. Void. This is argument one type. Let's say string. Okay. In and out. Return type. Um, okay. You can add additional interfaces that should be inherited. Published. Um, that is just a. Uh, um, like you can publish it if you want others to use your interface, but probably you won't if you create an extension. We don't want that. Okay, there is our extension. Um, so um, this error lock is, by the way, not enabled by default. You can show it if you go to window, show view error lock. That is quite helpful sometimes when there are errors. There's quite a bit of logging by the Eclipse plugin. You can see what it all does. It compiles the IDL files, merge, merge the types, generates the class files from the types, and makes the skeleton. Um, and, okay. and now imagine you have to do that. Um, you, you come to the project, get ta have been tasked by your boss to, to quickly create an extension, and you have to do that manually. So I think it's quite helpful. Okay, this is a a bug that is in LibreOffice, by the way. Somehow the generator puts slashes where it should put points for the Java package. It's on my list to write a bug report for that. Okay, so this is the service. This is the method we created. Um, and now what I will do, I can stick a breakpoint in here. Um, how much should I go into detail? Do you have any more after? Oh yeah, I have some slides, but I think the, especially this, this debugging um, is quite interesting. Okay. I so think that's the, even the, the major Okay, we point. print the argument here, argument one, stick a breakpoint, and then I probably need to close this. Um, okay, so we uh, want to deploy it. We create a new debug configuration or run configuration, LibreOffice application. Um, select the project. There is only one. The others are from my former experiments. Give it a name. Yeah. Okay. Now it has been deployed, hopefully. We check in the extension manager. It's not activated yet. Okay. Yeah, this is shown by default when there's no description, but that doesn't matter now. Okay, so now if we want to um, instantiate this service, 
we can just uh, make a macro. This is my service. My service equals create uno service. And then we take the name from here. And then we call the method my service dot my method and we have a string argument. Okay, then we run this and Eclipse switches to debug mode and we are here and have our string, some string. Yeah, that's very helpful. Okay, that is was the extension wizard and what you can do. With yeah, I mean, plugin. that's the kind of um, developer experience that, that especially Java um, people are used to. And um, now it's, I mean, it's, you can, of course, do that manually. Um, you can just uh, give the, the, the Jerry arguments and tools options so that it um, connects to your debugger and waits for it to connect. And then, but it's, um, it's nice to have, because there are so many moving parts um, to have that in, in one extension. I need to open it again and close the presentation. Go to recent files and so on. New progress. Ah, no tanks in the debugger. <laughs> okay, so I don't have much time left, but um, what I'd like to highlight, so there's, there's the, um, the IDE side of the, of, the, of the challenge to really streamline developer experience. Um, and then there's the um, how to make Java, you know, API more palatable to, to people who are used to statically typed interfaces. So there's one project, it's called Noa Libre, <coughs> um, initially developed by Ion. Um, there's um, kind of, that's also in the LibreOffice GitHub repo by now. Uh, it's wrappers around Uno API. It's used by a number of projects, um, including two open source ones, which is GNU Accounting and Therapy. Uh, GNU Accounting, well, it's accounting software. Therapy is a uh, doctor's uh, office um, patient management system. <coughs> um, and NOAA focuses mostly on um, embedding LibreOffice as a uh, Java bean. So um, you build an application around it, and you have LibreOffice running in the middle as part of the, the user interface. Um, another one um, is uh, Jaxo. That's also a wrapper um, around the rather arcane, or for, for people not used to it, arcane um, API. But it's more focused on extensions, like running inside uh, LibreOffice. Lots of uh, further resources here. Um, Obvious uh, further work is extend things like Noa Libre because it's just a, a small fraction of that that's currently nicely wrapped. Um, have more training materials. So um, thanks to um, City of Munich, there's excellent materials that need to be somehow reviewed, perhaps translated. Um, then the question star basic. So that that's what was one of the reasons I was asking who's still using that. So the um, let's say developer experience is a bit old school these days with the built-in IDE. So question is if people are using that still on the larger scale, if it would make sense to look into um, or scope uh, what it would take to give any of the existing IDEs like Eclipse uh, star basic support. <coughs> Uh, versus the, the general question whether star basic is for smaller things, then the, the IDE might be okay. And if you want to do anything serious, then just take use Python or Java. Python itself um, is um, up and coming, I think. Um, so you can, with IDE support, you can develop uh, quite nicely with it. It's a lot less nicely integrated yet. So there's um, quite a bit of integration work missing to make that really nice. 
Okay, so some examples, if I still have the time. So the, the prominent one is Volmux, which is Java-based, developed by um, essentially city of Munich with a bit of help from, from others here or there, um, which is um, really mail merge template management system on steroids um, targeted to, to public office. <coughs> um, this is again yeah, Java-based extensions. I don't know, is, uh, you know that, Martin, is that there's an extension, but is there also a, uh, a standalone uh, Java Uno part for it? Because I know there's this toolbar, which is outside the... Christoph, you would call that details? Okay, so... I think we are almost out of time. Why is that? Hmm. Okay, so Volmux then, um, well, there's another example for um, that we're working on for a customer. Um, Samuel did that largely, so this is just connecting LibreOffice to an existing DMS. Um, so we're just translating from one system to another. Um, with a bit of UI uh, for round tripping metadata, etc. Then there's um, um, macros, like really star basic macros for um, routine tasks. Somehow there's a slight automating set. Um, that's um, an example from the city of Munich, um, where there's just a, a CSV import into into writer documents. Um, so yeah just to, to give you some examples um, of what CIB is doing there. <coughs> so if you have any integration uh, work to do, any challenges there, we're here to help you. Other than that, of course, we're also trying to make the experience there nice and wonderful so that you can do that yourself. Um, I hope that we could show that. Um, that indeed, well, it's, it might not be perfect yet. I mean, there were a few glitches, but um, getting there. Okay, so with that, thanks so much for your attention. Are there any questions? Sorry, this might be the basic question, but I didn't really understand. Uh, what's the uh, exact purpose of this extension for connecting to internal DMS uh, re because as far as I know LibreOffice supports some general type connections such as you know Fresco, whatever, C, M, I, S and so on. So what's that? Yeah, that was um, a very custom document management system with very special features. It was for the courts in, um, Aus not Australia, in Austria. Um, yeah, and so they needed a custom solution. It was not working with the existing protocols. Yeah, so it, in this case, it was just easier to, to write cust to customize LibreOffice versus um, um, re-implementing or customizing the DMS. Um, just more economic. Maybe one last question, if we have the time. If there's any. Okay, thanks so much. Enjoy.